Welcome to Backstage with Jeffrey Morrissey. I'm your host, Jeffrey Morrissey. I'm joined today by Hosier. Hosier, thank you so much for the time. Thanks. Thanks, Jeffrey. So we're here at Boston Calling. Who are you looking forward to seeing today? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Tame Impala, i got to say. i got to say, I'm a big fan of King Princess. Nice. And, uh, uh, is Anderson Pack on today? Or is that, is that he is. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a, this is outrageous. I'm delighted. <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, you're gonna have that and play your own set and do a couple interviews. So you got the day uh, mapped out. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there we go. I have been loving Wasteland, baby. Thank you so much for such a beautiful record. Thanks. Uh, and so this one, uh, you ended up writing. Uh, had some writing partners along the way, as opposed to the um, previous album, was mainly just sort of you writing alone. Walk me through why you sort of wanted to partner with some different writers and and try things that way. I, I did. You didn't. You didn't? I know. No. no there's one song. Wikipedia lied to me. My apologies, <laughs> sir. Sorry, no, no. Yeah, it's all me again. <laughs> um, there's no, there's none of that. Um, there's a few different producers. So there we go. Uh, so I, I was, you know, on the first record, I just I co-produced it with just with one guy called mm -hmm. uh, Rob Kirwan. And on this one, I co-produced it with, uh, there's a few songs with Rob Kirwan again. And then uh, with Ariel Rickstead and uh, and Marcus Traps as well. So, um, but co-writing, no, there's, 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 there's one tune on there with myself and Alex Ryan. Uh, he he laid down some kind of some harmony behind behind a melodic idea. Uh, one of my favorites called As It Was, which is which was a fun experience writing with him. But no, that was pretty much the same as as, I, as I've always done it. Yeah. There you go. Well, it's a uh, it's a great one, and then obviously uh, Nina Cried Power is such an amazing song there. And you've always been one who you haven't been afraid to use your platform, whether it be with Cherry Wine, Take Me to Church, and obviously Nina. How have you navigated that experience, sort of identifying where you can make an impact, choosing your issues? Yeah, I would say it's the the intention is not an issue. The intention is not to make an impact. I think the intention is to just be honest about how you experience the world and. We all we all have values, and, and, and we're all citizens, and we all take those values into everything that we do. You know, whether we whether we think about it or not. And so, it's really just it's really just when you, when you're when you're writing something, you're you're reflecting upon how you experience some element of, of living in this in this uh, in this existence, and you're just trying to try to reflect on that honestly for its good and its bad, mm -hmm. and that's that's all I've I've, I've tried to do. So. Um, yeah. So navigating it is 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 only ever just trying to be is just trying to be honest about what you're trying to convey and, and just move forward on that. You know. Totally. And then another one of my favorite songs on this record is "To Noise Making Sing," and it's about the fun that music brings. I, now that you're doing this for a career, you play all these shows, you do all these interviews. How do you make sure that you're keeping things fun and that it's still good for you? Um. Yeah. I think I think that the the, the band I. I I'm touring with that helps that a lot, you know, being around people that that are enjoyable to be around who who get a lot of joy out of music. You'd be amazed how much how many musicians fucking hate music. Excuse me. <laughs> no, uh, totally. Um, and that's I get that as well too. It's easy to get jaded and and uh, and, but I think I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I think it's it's made it's made very easy when there's a group of people in front of you listening to you perform that really dig what you're doing. But uh, I'm very, very fortunate that I, we laugh a lot on the road. The band I'm with, we laugh a lot on the road, and, and um, yeah, I think it's just remembering, trying to always kind of playing and, and, and listening to the music that first turned you on and excited you about music. You know, that helps. And sort of speaking of that, yeah, you've said this album is sort of a collection of love songs, all with different perspectives and sort of different looks on love. What drew you to love songs in general and sort of writing those? And um, yeah, I mean, this album, they are, uh, they are kind of love songs. I suppose they're reflections more so on, on, on the end of things or the potential yeah. end of things. And, and, and so the inevitably then the end of love, let's say. And so uh, that which is, you know, literally a line from from the last song of the album that love soon might end. Um, but I think I, I, I I think I think I don't know what what draws me to love songs is that it's it's constantly self love love is not to get air, not to get uh, uh, too too uh, highfalutin um, but it's uh, love is it, it, you know it, it's serious business it is. you know what I mean I think I think hatred and its consequences are is serious business I think it's it's real and its consequences are actual and I think uh, although we don't we don't credit it. I think the the consequences, the real world consequences of kindness and love, are actual and and are worth crediting and are worth reflecting upon, and uh, 
they're as, they're as real and, and as actual as anything else. So, you know, I think love is serious business at the end, at the end of the day, yeah. Of course, and I like that you sort of do everything from general romantic love to friendship to the love that brought us to Original Sin, which I think might be a first for a song, so. Uh, there you go. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. And then uh, your live shows are something that are absolutely spectacular. Uh, I know that Dinner and Diet Tribes is a track that you've been looking forward to bringing out on the road. How's it been treating you on the road? Is it what yeah. you thought it was? Anyone surprising you as you play them? Um, that di Dinner Diet Tribes is super fun on, on stage. Um, and a lot of these songs were written to kind of be a bit, a bit, you know, to have a bit of fun on stage, I think, you know. Um, nobody, this track called Nobody is, is great fun. There's eight of us up there. Everybody's either hitting something or, or, or singing something or, or playing something at every, at every possible time. So it's energetic up there and we, we have a lot of fun. You know, we have a lot of fun. Uh, well, you do a ton of these interviews, which is a journalist I appreciate. Uh, yeah. What do you wish you were asked more often? What, what do I wish I was asked more often? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think. Uh, I, pro I get asked a lot of serious questions, and I think that's my own fault uh, for, for writing songs that, that kind of people open up into, into, into quite serious topics. But uh, um, so, I don't know, man. Yeah. So silly, silly, frivolous shit. You know, I, I think most musicians would complain about that, but I would enjoy that. I say, I can give you one. Is a hot dog a sandwich or is it not a sandwich? Wow. Is it a sandwich or is it not a sandwich? I would say I would not, I would have to really look into that <laughs> and the etymology of why we call things sandwiches. I would probably refer to it not as a sandwich. I would agree. And um, I'll make this my last question for you. Who are you listening to right now? Who am I listening to right now? Um, I was listening to, I suppose, uh, I'm doing a few shows with Maggie Rogers uh, this oh, yeah. year. I, I mean, I was, I, I was listening to her work quite a bit, I have to say. I just was listening to, um, after working with Ariel as well too, and I'm a big Vampire Weekend fan, so like the, the Father of the Bride album as well, I was really, really enjoying that. Um, quite a bit of Anderson Pack on the road, so I, I gotta say, this is, this is, I'm excited to be here today, you know, yeah. Well, I'm excited to catch your set. Thank you so much for the time. If you weren't listening to a Wasteland Baby, stop what you're doing, do it right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.